What's going on guys, Brian's here. Today is Wednesday, July 17th, 2024. Let's review today's price action and try to bring some context to what occurred in the market here today. We're looking at the SPY. The levels that we see on my chart are the levels that I like to mark off at the start of the week based on the gamma exposure. If you're new to this YouTube channel, I have a playlist in the description down below going over how I like to mark off my gamma exposure levels at the start of the week. And these become the main structure or how I approach trading the market for the week in conjunction with things like support and resistance, trend lines, and, and your standard technical analysis. If you're curious as to how I get the gamma exposure levels, I'm using Quant Trading Apps Advanced Gamma. This is the start of the week here. I like to draw these levels and then I'm basing it off of the profile that is created from Quant Trading App. So these are the high positive gamma strikes. This is our gamma flip. This is our absolute gamma strike. It creates this profile. As you guys can see here, I'm just using the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday expiration. I like to run my report right before the market opens at the start of the week. I build out my profile and has been my structure for how I trade for a little over a year and a half now. It's how I like to prep for the week as well as base a lot of my trading decisions around where is price in relation to these levels. If you've never heard of the gamma flip strike, it is the strike or the area in which if price is above or below, it means this instrument, in this case, the markets, the SPY is in a net positive gamma environment or a net negative gamma environment. So if price is above this strike, we are in positive gamma. If price is below this strike, we are in negative gamma. If price is above this strike, we can expect price action to have less volatility. In other words, price action might be a little bit choppy. We can also expect price to head towards the high positive gamma strikes. So these green strikes that you see on my chart are the high positive gamma strikes and it's coming straight from these levels right here. This is a high positive gamma. This is a high positive gamma. This is a high positive gamma strike. I like to label my strikes in order of one, two, three. So one being the strike that has the most amount of positive gamma, two, the second highest and three, the third highest. And then the same thing for the negative gamma strikes. This right here is the highest negative gamma strike as it is indicated right here. This would be the second highest negative gamma strike or this is the second highest negative gamma strike and the third one and so forth. And that's where these red levels are on my charts. So I also like to indicate where the negative gamma starts. So in this case here, 57, if we head back to this level right here, 57 is where the negative gamma starts popping up. This is where the market started the week. This was the closest strike, which was 62. So I marked off 57. This gray indication right here is letting us know it is the gamma flip. The gamma flip strike tends to act as a very powerful support or resistance level. If price is above it and then it drops down to it, it usually acts as some sort of support as we can see happened here today. Now, how can we use this information to actually take some trades? Let's start by understanding the fact that the markets gapped down below the high absolute gamma strike to start the week. So 560, if we scroll down here, 560, this purple line right here with this high purple mountain in the background is letting us know this is the absolute gamma strike price gapped down below a key strike. On top of that, it broke down below some key structural levels. We gapped down below the previous day's low. We also gapped down below Monday's low. In this case, it was the previous day before yesterday. So this is the low of the week in which we gapped down right here. That is significant. That is not the type of price action in which we've been seeing. As we know, the market has been in a very strong uptrend. If we take a look at the daily time, frame and we zoom out, we can see we've been in a very strong bull rally. Even as we zoom in right now, we can see that this is a gap right now to the downside. We haven't had many days like this so far this year. So this gap down broke this level. It also broke this level and today's low punctured this level. That is three key support levels that were broken on a day such as today. Usually whenever the market gaps down like this, we may see some sort of consolidation during a bull market because bulls are not completely going to just give up on the rally. So that is something to take note of. If we zoom out, we can see on the daily time frame, you guys can go back and check out previous times in which we would have had some sort of significant gap down and then just pay attention to price action. And then you can kind of use that kind of information for how you're going to approach the upcoming days. 
the daily time frame provides a lot of context and a lot of key information for your day trading. So as we can see, this is a strong level right here. If you also use the volume profile, let's zoom out for a second and actually take a look at our volume profile on the ES. This is the week to date volume profile. The link is in the description to this free TOS study. These are these high volume nodes right here that I have highlighted. This is last week's week to date point of control. These are key strikes that were pointed out for those of of you in the quant trading app discord you're obviously aware of these levels but i'm providing this information for anyone on youtube to follow so this is earlier in the day here just pointing out in a sense what to expect price was not looking strong for bulls so the expectation would be we will probably gravitate towards this demand zone which we have highlighted which price had reached and then the next thing to expect is that price would head down towards this point of control on top of that if we look at the nq the nq which is the nasdaq futures already broke down below this key demand area so the expectation would be that we will likely head back down towards this demand area if we were to take a look at some more technicals to build upon our ideas during the day because obviously this is in hindsight but as the market is open these are things in which advanced traders or traders that like to look for multi-confluences are aware of so that's why during the day i try to share these for anyone within the qta discord in case you guys are missing this key information. And then I'm recording this video after the fact, but it is something that is up on one of my monitors. You guys can see right here, this is one of the layouts. I haven't really shared this on uh, YouTube, but this is one of my primary layouts for one of my monitors. I like to have the futures, both NASDAQ and the ES whenever I get the chance. Sometimes I will alternate this instead of having the NASDAQ futures, I might have the Russell futures. SPY right here, these are linked. So this is my general primary time frame, and then my intraday momentum momentum setup would be the three minute charts with the nine EMA and the VWAP and then the ADD and I always keep eyes on the VIX here. So we'll get into this in a bit. We can actually jump over to the intraday momentum trading setup that I like to use because I know for most of you guys, 15 minutes might be too long of a time frame if you're day trading. Let's pay attention to this price action right here. This is the market gapping down below 560. 560 is also a significant gamma level as well as it is a key level with price action because even without looking at the options chain and knowing there is a lot of open interest around 560 we can just look at our charts and see that it is an area of interest for a lot of traders this week as it was the low of the week in this area price gapping down below that it means support has broken price has now gapped down below support so as it retraced back up to this level it failed to hold over it this is why i like the nine ema for day trading let's actually turn off the quant trading app study here so it doesn't get too chaotic this is our weekly qta script for the gold members i'm going to turn that off and then we can see right here the levels that are on my chart this is the nine ema this is one of the oldest videos that i have on this youtube channel it is still a, an, an amazing layout to have for day traders the three minute time frame with the nine ema and the vwap it is probably about as old as a momentum based setup that has existed before I started trading. I'm not the one that created this system for trading. Many traders use the nine EMA. So it is an exponential moving average set to the time frame of nine and the candlesticks are set to three minutes. Whenever you see this cross right here to the downside, so the nine EMA crossing down below VWAP, that is an indication of bears are in control. There is a lot of bearish momentum. It works the same way in reverse, which I've done on a few videos in the past. Say for example, a day such as Monday, price gaps up, it tries to push further. After the early morning session, it pulls back into the nine EMA, the nine EMA rises, we break above VWAP, and then we can see momentum carries price to the upside as the nine EMA acts as a dynamic support. Once the nine EMA is broken here, and we can see that this is a change in trend, we can then close out our long trade. If you are a momentum trader to the upside, the same thing if you are a momentum trader to the downside. It's all about building context as a trader. And the longer 
you're trading, the more and more you can compound these ideas without it overcomplicating yourself. One trader might not need anything on their charts to be able to understand that we broke below a key level. We broke below support for this week. So if I turned everything off of this chart right here, we just looked at the clean price action. And even if I turned off all of the levels and we just took a look at this and we drew this level here and we drew this zone right around here. Actually, let me draw the actual level. So let's just say from here to here, one trader might just have this zone marked off on their chart. Price gaps down below the zone. It tries to get back above it. It can't hold above the zone. It breaks back down below. Once it breaks back down below, we now have another trend that has been broken. So obviously, depending on your time frame, if you dial it into the one minute time frame, there's a ton of patterns that exist right within here. But for the most part, this is an uptrend. We have a low, we have a higher low, and then we have a higher low. And this is where that level gets taken out. So if I were to draw this on my chart, for those of you that are chartists, for those of you that appreciate technicals, right there. So let's zoom back for a second. You guys can see this, I'm gonna make it a little bit thicker. Again, let's make it white. And we can see this is our intraday trend that's forming. So it looks like the market's going higher, it's going higher. Then it breaks down within this zone and aggressive sellers take control. Let's zoom out. That's one way of looking at the markets. Let's go back and turn it on to my default level, which show the gamma exposure levels. This is a break below 560, which is a key level that a lot of traders are aware of at the start of the week. It is the absolute gamma strike. There's a ton of open interest around 560. It breaks down below. It tries to get above. It can't hold. It fails. Then let's turn on our studies and we take a look at what does our 9 EMA say? What does VWAP show? This is a breakdown below VWAP. This is a breakdown with the 9 EMA dropping. If we, if we zoom out and we head over to the futures, we can see what's going on here. Where is price action at the start of the day? It's here. It has not quite sold off to this area. This is an area in which there's been a lot of volume that was traded last week. This is the point of control. It might act as a magnet for price action. So at the start of the day, while the ES is still hovering around here, and it's rejecting the futures VWAP, where does it want to go? If it does not get back above VWAP, it's probably going to head towards the next very liquid area. If we zoom out now, and let's take a look at the NASDAQ futures, what do we have? The NASDAQ gapped down as tech was hit a lot harder than the broader markets. So as we see right here, this would be market open within this time frame here. As soon as the market opens, we have more selling pressure. This selling already breaks below this zone. Now, if price does not reclaim this zone, it's probably or more than likely going to head towards the next high liquid area. We have the previous week's point of control right here. So hopefully this is clear. This is the previous week's point of control. This whole area here, there's a lot of liquidity or there was a lot of liquidity in this range here. We can see it on the volume profile as a lot of NASDAQ contracts were traded in this area. So I'm just drawing this out as I shared this within the Discord. These are not zones that I will generally draw out on my charts because to me, the point of the script is to already have the levels on the charts. Even if there was nothing and the chart was just clean, let's actually make this clean and we took a look. You don't need to draw the levels out, at least in my opinion, to see that this is a zone right here. So price action is coming down to the zone. Same thing. This is a zone right here. Price action is at that zone. But for new traders or if you're trying to share things or do videos, obviously having the levels drawn out makes it easier to explain and describe. If we close this out now, what's going on with the proxy for implied volatility, which is the VIX. We can see that the VIX had already gapped above a significant strike for the quantum trading app traders. And we can see that the VIX was rising almost the entire day. That is important for bears. Bears for the broader market, so anyone holding puts, for the SPY or the NASDAQ will generally need implied volatility to keep increasing to sustain the selling. The moment the VIX gets crushed and it comes back down to wherever it was, even if there's no new aggressive buyers in the markets, just by the dynamics of Vanna and Charm and what market makers have to do, the markets will bounce back up just because implied volatility will come down. That is one of the forces that makes it very hard for the markets to crash. 
If we head now, instead of the SPY and take a look at the QQQ, which is the ETF for the NASDAQ, we can see similar situation right here. What happens? We get the nine EMA VWAP crossover right here earlier in the day, and then price breaks down. It tries to reclaim some significant levels, but it can't. So what we have forming are some technical patterns. For those of you that are technicians, you understand that these are bear flags, they're bear pennants. These are generally very elementary things that you learn when you first start off trading technicals. So for those of you in Quant Trading App or for anyone that was paying attention to the markets earlier today, I'm just gonna review some of the notes to try to clarify this here so this is the uh not the wpy this is the spy spy holding below vwap 9 ema crossover obviously when the market is opening you're typing things out and you're also trying to trade it's very easy to type make uh typos and mistakes but just pointing out where the high volume areas are so this is that nasdaq poc this is the week to date poc as well as significant levels pointed out on the es this is the spy price action and then this is the bear flag in which pointing out here so the combination of this bear flag this is not an indication or we don't have a strong enough reason to go long so we're taking a look at this earlier here in the day here's our bear flag if you were thinking about buying the dip there's not enough evidence to support that this looks like good price action to go long. Yes, we are at the low of day, but if we pay attention to larger context and we see this bear flag, as well as as well as what was pointed out in the futures, we have this other zone right below here, price is probably going to want to continue selling off. The same thing with the SPY at that time, it had not quite reached here. So patience in this case here is what helps to just wait to let price action play out. Now on top of that, if we head back to the SPY, where can you take a reversion to the mean trade? Well, we already know this key strike, which is 557, which is our gamma flip. The gamma flip acts as a key support. So what do we have later in the day? Just sharing more context for those that are in Quant Trading up here. We can see as we scroll down, now this is a little bit later in the day, we would expect buyers to show up around the Quant Trading app intraday zone as it has confluence with the gamma flip strike of 557 from the start of the week and this ES week to date POC. So this is that week to date ESPOC in which I'm referring to. This is our gamma flip and I'm expecting price to bounce at the intraday zone here because there's enough confluence, there's enough context around ex this expectation. So then just to make it clear, just because you see these doesn't mean you want to blindly buy. So to be a buyer, we would first want to see some sort of capitulation in volume. So maybe a massive spike, something like this. So you see this here, market is selling off early in the day. We see a nice spike in volume. What does it do? It reverts back to the mean, which would be view up right here before it gets rejected so if you're going to take a counter trend trade and you want it to be a quick reversion you generally will want to see some sort of spike in volume this is the three minute time frame you can look for the same thing on the one minute so in this case here we want to see a capitulation of volume or wait for price action to show a higher low and reclaim the nine ema on the three minute time frame so this is before it happens what to expect this is the area in which we're looking to bounce this is the quant trading app intraday zone that is created from pre-markets it is already automatically on a chart on top of that the vix is rising all day it is confirming the selling pressure if the vix is rising that's not a good sign Sign if you're looking to take a bounce trade back up in the spy you want to see the VIX cooling off for a bit and then you want us to see the VIX coming back down as we continue right along here let's see what we have a little bit later in the day what do we get here's our entry so price hits to the tick let's just pull this up right here price hits the intraday zone buyers are there we get a break back above the G flip level of 57 price reclaims the nine EMA. If this is your entry, the safe entry with a stop below of day, your target is going to be VWAP. If you're an aggressive trader and you like to enter closer to support levels, then obviously there was a possibility to enter right as soon as the level is hit. If you're a little bit more passive or conservative trader, this ends up becoming a safer place to get long because price has reclaimed. It has shown that there is some sort of strength. You're entering here, your stop loss below here. If you're day trading, your target is going to be VWAP. If you're buying price below VWAP when it's this far extended below it, you generally want to take that exit here. So it ended up playing out exactly as expected this does not always happen but i'm just trying to showcase or share that this is what an experienced trader would be thinking before price gets to a certain place we can infer we can read the charts we can have some sort of idea there's no way to know what's going to happen next 
but sometimes an hour, sometimes two, three hours before price gets to a like location, you can already anticipate what you're going to do. On top of that, this is where the NASDAQ reached. It hit at the top of this zone here. So this is offering some sort of support. But I wanted to let everybody know this is just some support for now because it was still looking pretty heavy. In other words, it doesn't look as if bulls are being very aggressive. And I'm not expecting the NASDAQ to just fly right back up, at least for today. Tomorrow, we'll see what happens. Obviously, we're at the start of uh, earnings season, so anything can happen. So this isn't a trade that I would take, but I was just pointing this out now that we've had this beer flag that formed all day here today. 480 is the next major gamma strike for the NASDAQ. So the expectation might be we head down towards this level. If that does, then the calls targeting back up here will be pretty cheap. And that might be a trade in which I will consider if I see some sort of confluence or confirmation on the chart. Hopefully this helps guys. This is just a standard or general video in which there isn't really much of a structure. I'm just highlighting all of the thoughts or just a handful of the thoughts in which a trader with some experience might be considering or looking at throughout the day. This is our multi bottom. So now what do we have right here? We have a touch, we have a touch, we have a touch of the zone, touch of the zone. So a multi bottom support. And this while price was still all the way back here earlier in the day, even as price was here early in the day, the expectation would be that we're probably going to head down to this zone. But if we get down to this zone, the expectation would be it it should not just fly right down below it. It should offer some sort of support, which means you can run something, something like a bull put spread. You can scout back up to VWAP. You can trade the futures. Let's see how much the risk would have been from the future standpoint. So if you're getting along the ES and you're getting along in this area here, because this is our lower day, this is the break back above on the SPY. This is a risk of about five points. And if we were to trade back up to the key strike, this is when the SPY hits a VWAP around this area here. This is 10 points. So risking five to make 10. Obviously, if you're in closer to the exact level, a larger return is about 15 points. So if you're risking five points to make 15, that's a decent three to one risk to reward ratio. Moving forward, the futures are more than likely going to be my instruments in which I trade. I like to trade the futures around the general elections. So the closer we get towards elections, I would much rather be trading the futures. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like it and share. Take care.